We want you to imagine a computer science scientist, so close your eyes. And since this is virtual, when I say raise your hands, mentally raise your hands or raise your hands at home, even though it might look a little bit weird. So I want you to raise your hand if you imagined a middle-aged guy with a little bit of stubble hunched over a computer. OK. Now I want you to raise your hand if you imagined a kind of stern-looking guy with a turtleneck and glasses, kind of like Steve Jobs. OK, now I want you to raise your hand if you imagined a young guy, kind of nerdy-ish, with a hoodie, kind of like Mark Zuckerberg. Now I want, to want you to raise your hand if you imagined some random male. OK, now raise your hand if you imagined a woman. I expect that not a lot of virtual hands went up. And you might actually notice that our Imagine a Computer Science Scientist slide is not only the gender stereotyped color blue for a male, but it also has many pictures of male computer scientists. If the slide were changed to this, you'd be more inclined to think of a female. But the reason why we have this and not that is because this slide is a representation of what we see in computer science, when we see males being spotlighted way more in computer science than females. So think of this as a comparison. What we're actually here to discuss today is the gender bias in computer science, cracking code G. So what is computer science? A lot of people see computer science as hackers coding in movies. But computer science is actually a combination of math, logic, and design. It can be used to create apps, websites, and operate computers and do so many other things. Computer science can empower people, pave the way for equality, accelerate the healthcare process, and expand human advancement. But even with computer science's importance today and definite importance of the future, women are still not being included in that industry. What we found really interesting is that computer science used to be a female stereotype. In the 50s and 60s, men worked on hardware engineering, which was at the time considered the job that required actual skill and talent, while women worked on computer science. With the increase of women in computer science, ComSci has opened up a whole new opportunities for girls. But as computer science became more popular, men started gaining interest in computer science and looked into computer science jobs. And back in an extremely sexist America, when employers had to choose between female employees and male employees, they chose male employees. And along with that, with the added on cultural bias, the industry boom of women in computer science was crushed. So an example is this, these ads. So computer science ads are, consist mainly of men. While women were often depicted as wives or product models. What seem like small issues contribute to the fact that only one in four computer science jobs are occupied by women. Throughout generations, men have been more predominant in STEM, and this needs to change now. This is a picture of Sung and I when we were around three to six. And coincidentally, this is also around the age where most girls start losing interest in computer science. And you might be wondering, how is that possible? How can you lose interest in something so complex at such an early age? Well, when I was in seventh grade, I had a really awesome teacher. And something that she showed us was the dot phenomenon. So the dot phenomenon is this research study conducted by a teacher a second grade teacher, where she separated her class into blue and red groups by putting blue stickers on some and red stickers on the other. And keep in mind that this was completely um, random. So the first week she told the entire class that the kids with the red dots were actually smarter than the kids with the blue dots. And then quizzed them on an assessment going over math, science, social studies, and English. The kids with the red dots scored significantly higher than the kids with the blue dots. A week later, she changed the narrative and told the group that the kids with the blue dots were actually smarter than the kids with the red dots. And in result, they actually scored higher. Another example of how, cultural, how influential bias can be is this TED Talk done by Deb Sterling, where she talked about a worldwide study con conducted on girls and boys around the world, and they were tested on the same science test. The girls actually scored, scored higher than the boys, but not in the US, showing that this is not a biological issue. 
This is a cultural issue. And going back to young Christine and Haesung, this was our culture, filled with dolls, Barbies, and dresses. Now compare this to a boy's toy aisle, where you'll see cars and machines. And not that the items in these aisles should not be there, but the fact that the toy manufacturing companies are so gender specific and gender biased, and the fact that these aisles do not have cars or building projects that help kids explore the functionality of things, girls actually have lower spatial skills than boys. And these experiences and expectations have become transparent through numbers and experiences. To put this into perspective, here are some statistics. Currently, only 18% of computer science graduates are women. Only 26% of computer scientists are women. And out of those who took an AP computer science test in high school, only 19% were women. And that also complies with the fact that 60% of that girls who take a computer science class in high school are 60% more likely to pursue it in the future. So when I was eight years old, my sister asked me this really interesting riddle. And I wanted to ask you this here today. A father and a son get into a car accident and are rushed to the hospital. The father dies, the boy is taken to the operating room, but the surgeon says, I can't operate on this boy because he's my son. How is this possible? Well, at that age, I was unable to comprehend this question. An eight-year-old me and 75% of the other people who asked this question couldn't come to the simple answer. And the answer was that the surgeon was his mother. So what keeps an eight-year-old and 75% of the other people asked this question from coming to the simple answer. The gender bias that is present in our everyday lives. So, how, so a personal example of how gender bias has affected me specifically was one of my first experiences with computer science. So I decided to go to this virtual camp and it was teaching quantum computer science. And it was taught by a few college students. So this was completely virtual. And in the course, it said that there was no previous experience required, which I should have known I needed to know at least something from the title itself. So when I went in, I noticed that I was one of only two girls in the entire class, and I didn't think much of it. But then the teachers, who obviously had never taught a class before, because they spent half the time bragging and arguing, launch into a lesson about pitch frequencies and how to calculate pitch frequencies with Python, both of which was something that I knew nothing about. So we got separated into groups. I was put with the other girl and two other boys. And we were just put in and we had to calculate pitch frequencies. And none of us knew anything. None of us knew what the question was asking, nor how to solve it or how to start the problem. So we called in the four teachers and all of them were male. And the first thing they did was completely ignore me and the other girl. What they did with the other two boys was first go through a step-by-step -step process, give them a hint, and then ask them how they didn't know this answer. And then when they looked to us, they, gave, they sent us a copy of the answers and left. When we went back into the main room, they ended up answering everyone's questions and completely disregarded me and the other girl. After this experience, I was extremely discouraged. Computer science just wasn't something that was appealing to me. And being the only girl in the room is hard, especially when you have a disadvantage. But after that, I got to attend a two-week computer science course alongside other girls with zero bias. And in those two weeks, I learned how to create a fully functioning app and website, showing how influential a good environment without any bias can be. Contrastingly, yet similarly, I used to live in Westport before moving to Olympia. Now, not a lot of people know where Westport really is, but you can just imagine a very, very small town with a low population. I attended Acosta Elementary School up to Acosta Junior Senior High School, which combined both the middle school and the high school together because of the small number of students. To put the number of students into perspective, there were only 300 in the entire K through 12. Now, because of the small number of students, we had very little opportunities. This not only included the potential electives to take, but also the higher level core classes. We had zero APs and zero honors classes. Now compare that to the no numerous amounts of APs and honors classes that we have here at Olympia High School. Upon moving to Olympia High School and receiving the opportunity to study computer science, I've been compelled to pursue a path in the STEM area. 
So from these experiences, we learned that the intersection between a lack of opportunity and gender bias can really negatively influence someone's perception of computer science. And as we talked to more girls around the world in the STEM field, we learned that this was not a case-by-case -case scenario. This has been a pattern. So how do we solve this? How do we end this cycle? We go back to the question of why does it matter? Why do we need girls in computer science? And what impact does it have on our community? Not only fact, the fact that we are missing out half of the population's ideas, innovations, and creations, a lack of representation can also be deadly. There is a group of middle-aged men who were making an airbag. They released a product and it ended up killing dozens of women and children. This is because of the lack of representation. There was no female voice to stand up and say that that airbag would not be made to suit the female body. And this shows that a lack of representation is extremely harmful. So where do we start? Well, computer science education is failing us right now with a lack of choices and bias around the world. And that is detrimental because many jobs in the future will require basic computer science education. So we want to end this cycle with a solution. Hey Sung and I created Wix and Buy Her For Her. Wix is a female-focused computer science club at Olympia High School. After our past experiences and learning how having good opportunities in an environment with zero bias could really change a girl's life, we wanted to bring those experiences to Olympia High School, where we hope to equip the leaders of the future with a skill as important and even more important than skills like math and science. The other project, By Her For Her, is a six-week program launching at Centennial Elementary School. There, we hope to empower young girls and inspire a passion in coding. We want to make computer science appealing to these students by providing these opportunities. We also hope to have female speakers come in because we know how important it is to see female role models in STEM. So in the end, we want to show that computer science is essential to both males and females. So whether you're the parent, friend, classmate, or peer, or the girl itself of someone who is considering taking a computer science class or even joining Wix or by her for her, know that your decisions can make a difference. So we want you to imagine a computer scientist. And hopefully by this time, you're thinking about your friend, sister, or even yourself. Thank you. Thank you.